Left Bank Paranoia It seems that the story of another big Russian offensive, which began with an article in Newsweek, is an element of a large, demoralizing Russian psychological operation. The fact is that a number of Russian sites are now spreading similar types of propaganda about some kind of mega-offensive and panic in Ukraine. In particular, a fake is being rebroadcast that the AFU general staff is asking President Vladimir Zelensky to order the mining of the Odessa and Mykolaiv regions because of fears of a big spring offensive by Russia in 2024. Obviously, Russia launched this demoralizing psychological operation against the backdrop of a collapsing front. While the first line of defense was breached in Zaporizhia region and Ukrainian defense forces are preparing to breach the second line of defense, demoralizing fakes are being spread both for Ukrainian and Western consumers of information and motivating for domestic ones. They say that the great rush of Russian troops to Odessa is not far off. Well? In this context, I ask you to observe information hygiene and critical thinking. Russia is not capable of such offensive actions, as I explained in detail in the last video. Otherwise, it's quite telling that such a psychological operation gained life by being thrown in via Newsweek. Events on the left bank of the Kherson region have been worrying the Russian occupants and their propaganda pool for months, which led to the start of this psychological operation. Russians have been yelling that the Ukrainian side is starting to force the Dnipro River, advancing on the left bank and expanding the bridgehead, since the beginning of 2023. Almost every month and a half or two months they have another collapse with stories about Ukrainian paratroopers landing near the Antonov Bridge and in other unexpected places. But that's the thing, all this is a routine work of special operations forces, which began in 2022, immediately after the liberation of the right bank. Moreover, such actions are carried out along the entire front line, but for some reason less attention is paid to them. Less attention is paid because it's a front line on land. Well, they went in, cut out the enemy position, went back out. But in the case of the left bank, it's a sabotage group crossing the Dnipro, landing and working out in an area with more problematic conditions of withdrawal. That's what attracts attention. The gist is simple. A sabotage group lands on the left bank, in one or another location, cuts out the enemy position and goes back. The enemy sends a new unit to the position and the next night everything is repeated. On the third fourth time no one is sent to this position anymore. Firstly, few people will agree to go to a place where you are guaranteed to be cut one night, and secondly, these locations come under fire control from the right bank. Thus. There is a process of expansion, not of a bridgehead, but of a grey zone, a territory where neither Russian nor Ukrainian forces are present. On the other hand, this grey zone is remotely controlled more by Ukrainians than by Russians. To say that the Ukrainian troops are conducting some kind of offensive operation, forcing the Dnipro, landing paratroopers, expanding the bridgehead is not correct and it is too early to talk about it at all. When the full-fledged process of liberation of the left bank begins, I think you will all understand it perfectly well, without any expert explanations on the topic what is happening. On the other hand, over the past six months, the left bank has created a steady paranoia among the occupants. Every rustle in the bushes is an offensive of Ukrainians. Right, let them be afraid, they will run faster.